This is project nine of Hacking with Swift. We're going to go back to project seven and fix a critical bug in the code using one of Apple's most important technologies called Grand Central Dispatch, or GCD. For more information, see the website hackingwithswift.com, where you can buy this video and all the videos in this series in beautiful high resolution. Alternatively, you can buy books that explain this technique project and all the other parts of the series and go into far, far more detail. Please do buy something that does help support my work to make more videos like this. Alternatively, follow me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. If you have problems, follow me, get in touch. I'll do my best to help you if I have time. So if you have not finished Project 7, please stop this video. Do that first, then do 8, of course. Now come back to 9. You must do this series in order. If you have done Project 7 already, good on you, fantastic. Please take a copy of your work so you can see it before and after. We're going to go ahead and modify it now. So with your copy of Project 7, go ahead and open an Xcode. And let's remind ourselves of the actual problem we're facing. It occurs here in view did load. What happens is we give uh, our code a URL to load, make an NS URL out of it, and then pass it to NS data, which uses contents of URL, which means get whatever is inside this URL, downloads all the text from the web, and then we go ahead and parse it. Now this is what's known as a blocking call, a blocking call. And what it means is when the CPU hits this line of code, it stops. It can't go any further. It can't go ahead and start parsing the JSON until it has downloaded the contents of the URL. And that means connecting to the server, saying, give me some data, waiting for data, receiving data, and then continuing. It's very, very slow. Now, at the time, it was fine for our project. I mean, I didn't want to introduce it because it's a bit much uh, all at once. And broadly speaking, if you're working in the iOS simulator, you're probably on Wi-Fi or you're on an uh, Ethernet directly plugged into the internet pretty much. Uh, so you get super fast speed, so you wouldn't really notice it was slow. But for poor iPhone users or iPad users who are you know, on a train or walking around in a bad hotspot or on you know, GPRS internet in the middle of nowhere, who knows what, uh, this kind of contents of URL call is terrible because the, 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 the CPU literally gets this line and stops. It can't go any further. It can't do any more work until that returns. It's a blocking call. So behind the scenes, your app is actually able to execute multiple sets of instructions at the same time, so which means it can take advantage of having two cores, you know, iPhone 6, uh, 5, and S, and so on. These have two cores inside them, two CPUs running all the time. They can run in parallel. They can do two things at once. In fact, I believe the iPad Air 2 has three CPUs. So each CPU can do something, so you get three times the power if you use them all effectively. Now, what happens is when your code runs, so it's running here and viewed it load and gets down to here, this is running in what's called a thread. It's an execution process, a load of code that's running, and it'll run on uh, one CPU at a time. Uh, and what it means is they, they execute code in the order you give them the code. So it'll, it'll, it'll start here and then go to here, then here, then here, then here, then work its way down slowly. It doesn't jump around. You don't have uh, two CPUs working on the same code at the same time. It's not like, you know, one CPU 1 does that line, CPU 2 does that line, CPU 3 that line, and so forth. That'd be really inefficient. So CPU 1 does the whole thing. In fact, right now, every part of our program is running exactly only on one CPU because we have created no other threads with work, So, which means we're not particularly taking advantage of the amazing hardware out there. Cunningly, with iOS, and importantly, in fact, uh, all user interface work must occur on the main thread. Now, the main thread is what we call the initial thread your program was created on. Now, right now, our entire program runs on the main thread. But if and when we start going to the background, any user interface work must happen on the main thread. If you try and do work on the background thread, on any other thread, basically, uh, it might work. It might very well work. It might not work. It might cause crazy results, or it might just crash your program. And quite frankly, crashing your program is the best uh, outcome there, because it's telling you this is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this, you know? And that's a serious warning. 
you must never modify your user interface off the main thread. Always do it on the main thread. So GCD handles giving work to threads for you. It figures it out for you. iOS says, well, it looks like CPU 2, CPU 2 isn't doing anything right now. Let's use that thread over there and make, allocate that some work, or CPU 1 or CPU 3. And it makes sure you can do as much as you can with the available system resources. But you don't get to have very fine-grained control. And that means you need to be really vigilant in your code to make sure only one thread modifies your data at one time. So, to recap, this is all important because uh, as soon as CPU1, or the, our thread, hits this line, it has to access the internet, which is much, much slower than everything else. And it can't carry on running all our UI code. It can't carry on doing stuff. So as soon as it hits that line of code, NS data, contents of URL, the application basically freezes up. The UI stops responding because the main thread, the bit that does the UI, is busy trying to download stuff from the web, which takes comparatively an extraordinarily long time. You know, for us, you might think, well, that, that page loaded in, in a, a tenth of a second. But in a, a tenth of a second for a CPU is a very, very long time. So it, it, that is a blocking call. It blocks our code from carrying on, and that annoys users. It looks particularly bad if the connection is really slow or you know, on a train, it might take, say, uh, 20 seconds to return. So it looks terrible. We're going to fix this using GCD because there, is a, a, there are a few functions we're going to pull in. But the most important one is a function called dispatch async. And it means asynchronously make this code happen. And that's the magic of GCD. We don't have to think about threads and CPUs and processes and all this kind of thing, workers and all that horror. We just say, here's some code. You figure out the best way to run it and it will do a great job of doing so. There is one downside, I'm sorry, this stuff all uses closures. Now, if you don't remember closures, um, you're probably in a happy state, but they're coming back now, and they are your best friend, really. No, really they are, they are your best friend. Closures are so much powerful, uh, powerful features in them. So, we're gonna use dispatch async twice. Once to push some code to the background thread, do this work in the background where it won't hold up the uh, main thread, i.e. the user interface. Then, once more to push code back to the main thread. What this means is any heavy lifting, i.e. downloading of stuff, and really we might as well do parsing there as well, can be done in the background thread where we don't block things, away from the user interface thread, the main thread. And then push it back to the main thread so we can update the user interface safely, which is the only place, remember, that it can be safely updated. So, we're gonna go ahead and modify this using GCD, and I'll write a bit of code and then explain how it works. So, in here, that's before the uh, if let, we're going to call dispatch async. Now this takes uh, two parameters here, what queue you want to run on, and what code you want to run. This is actually a closure at the end here, as you can see with the, the um, parentheses going on. Um, so we could pass that using trailing closure syntax. I'm sure you remember that much, hopefully. And for the first one, all we have to do is say which queue we want to run on, because GCD automatically gives us a number of queues depending what we want to do. So for the first parameter, we are going to write dispatch get global queue then identifier, I'll just put in zero for a minute, and then flags. The flag should always be zero. This one here should always be zero because uh, Apple have reserved that to be modified later. For block, just delete that and then make it uh, a trailing closure like that. So, let's have a look. Yes, there are errors all over the place. Don't worry, we'll fix that in just a second. We need to put a name of a queue in here. And it so happens that uh, GCD gives us a number of queues already that mean different things. Specifically, the ones we care about are the user interactive queue, the user initiated queue, the utility queue, and the background queue. Now, each of these represent what's called uh, quality of service, QOS, quality of service. 
uh, and it means how important is this thing to you and more precisely to your user. If I were to say I want uh, user interactive, that means that this is absolutely critical work to be done in order to keep my user interface running correctly. Uh, and that means uh, the, the CPU will go nuts trying to fulfill this as soon as it can. It will you know, waste loads of battery power if necessary in order to make this work happen as soon as possible. One down from that is user initiated. So this is for tasks that the user requested and are now waiting in order to continue. For example, you might say if it, uh, apply some filters to an image. The user's pressed save, applying filter, applying filter, apply filter, done. That wait period, they're actively waiting and watching, that's user initiated. Important, but not absolutely critical. Next one down is the utility queue. This is for long running tasks that the user is already aware of, but not desperate for right now. So if they requested something from your app and they can go off and use other stuff or use a different app for a while, that is a utility uh, quality of service you're looking for. And finally, the background queue, the background quality of service. This is for long running tasks that users don't really know about and they're probably not even aware of it or don't care about when it completes or don't care how far through it is. That's background. Now, we just tell GCD how important our work is and it will make sure it's given to the right thread automatically and executed in the right way. Now, for example, a background queue, uh, iOS might say, well, actually, it's obviously not very important. I'm going to try and save as much battery power as possible, whereas uh, User Interactive will burn battery and attempt to execute faster. So for now, we're going to modify this because this is about the user loading up our app. We're going to use User Initiated. Very important, but the user the user actively actively waiting, but not you know not critical. To just set and burn burn uh, battery power. So we write the the constant Q O S underscore class underscore user oops user initiated like that, and that will find the global GCD queue that handles these important tasks. Again, leave that as zero. Uh, it's erroring all over the place because uh, we haven't ended the brace. So that does it like that. Just indent these lines. You press, select them all and press Command, right brace to indent them all. <clears throat> so that, that modifies our uh, code so it runs in the background. That's really all it takes. This will, uh, if it needs to, fire up a thread, uh, execute it, and return the results. Now, behind the scenes, you know, GCD manages those threads, so it's going to reuse them, let's face it. Um, but it, it does all the work for us, and it'll, iOS will balance between CPUs and so forth to make sure we're using the best uh, value out of our system we can. Now, this is a closure. This is a trailing closure here. And, of course, with closures, you need to specify uh, unowned self in to make sure there's no uh, uh, hideous captures for strong reference cycles. Uh, and you must also specify explicitly self.parseJSON, self.showerror, self.showerror, and self.showerror. And that's it. That, now, that code is now GCD ready. But with this change, our code is both better and worse. It's better because it now no longer blocks the main thread. This code will run asynchronously, i.e. in parallel, on this thread, the user-initiated thread. Um, so the main thread the user can, can do stuff with our app. It'll res respond normally. But it's worse because parse JSON ends up by reloading data for the table view and show errors in here several times. And any code inside here or called from here will all run on the background thread. So we've told it and put this on the background thread and it will do, but any other code called inside that work will also be on the background thread. So we are modifying things on the background thread. And again, it might work. You might not realize you've done this because it might work. But it is bad and it will break your app eventually. Be very, very careful doing this. So if the download fails, load error will be called on the background thread. And its UI alert control is called on the background thread. And that's bad. And if it succeeds, then parse JSON reloads the table view on the background thread, all of which are bad. So we could, if we choose to, say at this point, uh, dispatch async again, you know, do stuff, 
blah for that and for this one and for this one blah like that and also you know down here for this one like that but that's quite hideous there are too many um, dispatch asyncs there an easier way in this particular case is to put the dispatch async inside the methods as needed so I'll say for show error uh, at this point we're still on the background thread it's always launched the background thread so it continues in the background thread we can dispatch async again back to the main thread here Whoops. so in place of uh, uh, just after the brace you want to write dispatch async and for queue name you want to say dispatch get main queue uh, and that's it you can go ahead and uh, um, do another uh, little uh, closure like that and that will show the error on the screen now it's warning us again because it's a closure which means we must do unowned oops unowned self in and then say self dot present view controller like that that clears the error nicely so for, for parsing the JSON we can put it here so let the download happen fully then parse it fully this can happen all in the background it's perfectly fine and only when we're ready do we say dispatch async dispatch get oops, dispatch even get I can't type get main queue and then uh, use a block with unknown self in and then self dot reload table uh, data and the brace the code the actual work the stuff here and the stuff here the actual work of this is almost identical and that's one of the wonderful things about GCD it's just a matter of wrapping up neatly in closures which means of using an own self in and self everywhere to avoid strong reference cycles which we don't want but this this point the code is now in a great place we can now uh, run it back and it will responsively let us change tabs and so forth without blocking the UI because that's all now being done in a background thread. It will just pop in when it's ready. So you'll see I will select, uh, see, it's a blank and then it pops in. Top rated, blank, pops in. So it's reloading it correctly once it's finished downloading it, which is fantastic. So this is what GCD does. Now, the, even though I've tried to simplify things by, by um, hopefully just removing complexity and, and uh, using slightly simpler words and hopefully a very simple example gcd is still complicated now, even though it handles creating uh, threads and managing threads and balancing it all based on quality of service and system resources ios does a lot of work for you uh, the alternative is to do all that work yourself and no one would want to do that let's face it and there is so much more you can do with gcd but that's the most important thing this bounce where you go to the background first and then back to the foreground when you're ready to do actual UI work. Bounce back, bounce forward. It's so very common, this uh, particular paradigm of coding. You'll use it all the time. And that completes our project. That code is now much, much better. It no longer holds up the user interface anymore. So it's just a lot better. For more information, please see the website, hackingwithswift.com, where you can buy this video and all the videos as uh, high resolutions. You can also buy the books, which contain lots more detail, and it costs like $3 per book. Check it out. Uh, alternatively, follow me on Twitter. I am at Two Straws, and I'd love to hear from you. Take care and have fun.